600 young people aged between 14 to 35 die in the United Kingdom each year. If I then go on to tell you that 40% of those are aged under 18 and that the average lifespan of a UK citizen is around 83 years, uh, you can imagine how many life years are lost each year in young individuals. Everything we do is about raising awareness of what could lead to sudden death, but also trying to identify people at risk of sudden death. Uh, my involvement with CRY came about when we lost our son back in uh, March 2011. Uh, ben was playing uh, football and he collapsed on the football pitch. Um, and uh, he, uh, it was, took 15 minutes for his heart to be uh, restarted, which was when he was in hospital. Uh, and sadly, he passed away three days later. So we wanted to know why this had happened to him. And so we did a lot of uh, research on the internet and we came across the charity Cardiac Risk in the Young. Many of the families who contact us don't realise um, that other family members may be at risk of an inherited condition. I about 15 years ago now I had a sister who died of a heart condition. Uh, she was a twin sister so um, places like Cry are really keen to sort of keep monitoring me to make sure that there's no um, progressive development that in terms of my heart going wrong or anything. What we do in here is called a cardiac ultrasound. So it allows us to look at the structure and the function of the heart. There are a number of statistics which are so important, um, which drive our work forward. One of them is the understanding that at least one in 300 young people are at risk with a potentially life-threatening condition that we identify routinely in our screening programme. At CRY we strongly believe that research should uh, be at the forefront of everything we do. We've been performing research in young individuals ever since 1997. A CRY research fellow is a person who we recruit, who we have a, a number of grants that are available and they're, they're sought after by fellow, their fellowship grants, so people apply for them. But what I would like to do is to ensure that all of these fellows that CRY has funded over the last six years will become consultants and interspersed all over the United Kingdom so that we've got a referral base for any young person to an expert at any time we wish. 50% of his time will be NHS work, where they're working with cry families, supporting them after a young sudden death or if they're concerned about symptoms. 20 to 30% of their time will be spent over a computer, publishing, reading the research data that's out there, and then 20 or 30% of their time will be spent out in the field actually meeting with people who are being screened, evaluating them, and identifying people within the screening programme and ensuring that that is then goes back, fed back into our research programme. My primary research was uh, in sudden arrhythmic death syndrome, so screening families who unfortunately lost a loved one and we couldn't identify a cause for that particular death. Our research has identified that one in 300 young people has a condition that could potentially kill them. One in 100 young people has a condition that will cause problems later on in life. Within Ben's sporting community, within Ben's school community, uh, Ben's Memorial Fund is, is a well-known fund. It has its own profile. So Benjamin's legacy is very much... Um, you know, it's very much driven by you know, his, uh, you know, what he's left us with, you know, um, um, something in his name that we can remember him by. The funding of our research pro programme is a very significant amount of money. So what we need is for people to understand the importance of our research. So it's to understand that screening and research work together. There's a symbiotic relationship there. And actually in, in understanding that, they'll want to support that.